All right, let's get started. All right. So yeah, I'd like to thank every everyone here right today spend your time to attend this webinar with me. All right, uh, let me just do a short introduction of myself. My name is William. I'm based in KL and I'm actually a PCO for security Gen. So to long, along with today's webinars, I would like to share with you some of the the aspect and also the security threat and ability is actually we have found, all right? And uh, and so today titles, we actually put it on the decoding for the 5G ecosystems. So along with this slide, so I hope that actually we can gain some basic understanding on the 5G in terms of the security risk, threat, guideline, all right? So, and feel free to put up your questions, all right? So uh, to put up your question on the chat box. So with that, Okay, let me just start uh, my my sharing for the presentation. Okay. All right. So I wish for the takeaway home from everyone who's actually attending these webinars to gain at least basic understanding on the current five G security enhancement on the architectures being formed by three GPT. Some enhancements uh, being put in place as, com as compared to previous 4G LTE architectures. So I will share with you along, along with this. And the second thing, second main objective here, we would like to, you guys to at least understanding what is actually the guideline being used on as a, as, a, as a baseline for the 5G security. Example, TS33 series is actually being widely used, right? widely being used for, for all, most of the operators. And uh, also sharing with you some of the, the threat and vulnerability, which actually we have discovered by uh, my research team and what actually the best practice in order to do the medications. Okay. All right. Let's get started. Okay. So first of all, we'd like to see the, the main thing on the 5G ecosystem. All right. 5G ecosystem is a large landscape. Here, I actually split it into three main pillars from enables to core players to authorities. Okay, you can actually uh, understand in such way from technology formed up by 3GBP to the threat modeling actually formed by some of the regulatory. Let's look at the 5G enables, which actually include cloud basic technology, okay. ATSI, ATSI, ATC, uh, IETF. Cloud native chipset manufacturing like Qualcomm. So this is actually uh, the 5G enables. Okay. And moving towards the core players, which include technology, the telecom operators, the mobile operators, GSMA, 3GPP, and many technology vendors, from the core vendors to the RAN to the open open RANs. So these actually are the core player in the 5G ecosystem. Then we have the authorities and public agency, okay, like NSTI, government regulatory, NCR, as well as the third parties, the parties, for example, some telecom security experts who do the security research to find a lot of critical vulnerability threat and attack vectors, which X5G might expose with. This is just a subset for all point of 5G ecosystems. Let's narrow down to the 5G security posture. If you are in the security posture, mostly, most likely you will start with 3GPP. 3GPP is actually given many security specifications for 5G standard. TS33.501 actually firms a security specification for 5G or the network functions core modules, okay? And you can refer to many considerations being discovered by NCR as they are keep releasing a lot of cybersecurity report over telecom infrastructures, okay? Then as a third parties, as a security experts, we oversee all these materials. One of our main works, one actually on our main work is to collect all this material analyze it and provide a complete vision. This is actually part of our webinar, which actually we are trying to share 
a complete vision for this 5G uh, the ecosystem and also the security. Of course, you can also follow these materials, but you took a lot of effort and time for someone who's actually want to go through all of this. Okay. 5G is not only for, for a business for operators. Okay, and this it also being considered as actually a critical infrastructures. Okay, US uh, government agency, CISA, the cybersecurity infrastructure security agency, have focused on improving cybersecurity for nation. They have actually defined all main pillars, which actually include as, as critical infrastructures, telecom, utilities, public health, logistics. They also define information communication technology is the integral for daily operations and functionality of U.S. critical infrastructures. Telco company are both critical infra and service providers. So as I say, telecom is not only for, for a business. It's also an enables. So that's why the CISA break it down into, into these uh, four main pillars. Just to add up, CISA, had, CISA also stated, if vulnerability in the ICT supply chain, such as expose of hardware, software, or even many service by third parties, are expelled, the consequences can affect all users of that technology or services. So they underline the importance of security of telecoms as both critical infrastructures and service provider. So our next slide, we will focus on the changes across generation for the mobile technologies. Here is actually our mobile technology evolution focus on changing across generations. Started in 2G, the core vendors provide almost everything. The core from core access to transport will integrate integration to the building, to the computing, and to the security as well. A single vendors in 2G provide all as a package own integration, own security implementations. So this is why some of the security aspect doesn't have actually visibility to public, okay? But started from 3G, we have actually seen the competition begin. Moving access integration and billing from the core vendors. Now we have seen here, they have two vendors to integrate on the access. So operator, mobile operators start to do integrations. Okay, begin of 4G, computing start to change the, to the standard cost. There's no, it's, uh, those traditional appliances have been phased out. Solution security, there's a highlight here, right? Solution security still stay on the core, core vendors. Okay, by late, by late 4G, security by design is not enough. Security too is actually required. It's actually highlighted here. And some many service, many security services by vendor, by third party vendor, will be will be become more common demand by operators. Okay. And operators are concentrating still on integrations, taking control to strengthen their security posture. Okay, and begin. When you actually begin to 5G, some dramatic changes. Core access transport, even security, has moved up from the abandoned core to a dedicated solutions. And operator care about security. Awareness of impact caused by trade vulnerability and demand for service from the expert vendor is getting more common. So if you've seen here, only core and access stay on the main core vendors. You can see here it's getting more and more distributed and specified vendor is taking more rules in the 5G's architectures here. Okay, now about the security posture, it requires some changes on organizations. Let's look at the 5G, the, the structures. Okay, you have all these silo in telecom networks from core access transport to the NFEI, to the application services, to the 
to the IT side. Okay. If you are responsible for the assessment work rollout and security, you basically did a very a brilliant rollout. Someone had to be responsible to validate the security posture, whether it is effective. Leadership should define the, the security posture. Don't be told what secure means. Understand which risks are critical for you, for your business. Expose the risk and mitigate it. Instructions, awareness, I would say like instruction awareness from the sea level with the security awareness is actually the key to strengthen overall 5G, 5G security. Everyone in every silos will have to play their roles. Let's look at the topic which actually we, we are dealing with virus of network scenarios. Here actually I put up for from wholesales to MVMO to private and to, to the public cloud. Think of 5G. 5G is not a single network scenarios thing. First of all, if you see the wholesales, it can be a wholesales wholesaling access. Example, preparing the ready access network and wholesale to all the the uh, mobile operators. There are many different models when they sell to operators, depending on which part to be included and which part not to be included. So they, here we have a lot of variants. Second, go for MVMO. Some has only U UPF. UPF is actually for the uh, user plane. Some have several more, like they have their own UDM driver database and have more core function devices. 5G have made modular and flexible to be customized. So MVMO deployment model are, are all unique by their, based on their business case. They are not require a full suite of 5G SPA architectures. Modular is actually network function is customized based on the business case, okay? And we have private and public cloud. So responsible because Virtualization is actually almost mandatory for, for 5G. So responsibility and definition of order are depending on telco cloud site type and architecture shape. Okay, so here we can, we can say there's so many variations in network scenarios, right? So if you have come across any questions, right? So feel free to put it up on the chat box, okay? So to conclude here, there's no network have, there is no network have a same look, which means it is very hard to define a borders, to define the parameter, security parameter. Responsibility, as there are many different combination of infrastructures, business model, standard 2G to 4G, we have a fixed modules. For, for, for 5G, there is not, based on the business need. So I mean, how you define the, the exact, Order when it comes like wholesale selling their access to mobile operator, MEMO leasing their infra. We have to say it's very expanded term of border here. So border, the security parameter is actually different based on the, the, the deployed network scenarios. Let's look at another angle, right? So we here we want to discuss, okay, when is the perfect time for operators to secure network for 5G? The answer is pretty obvious. Now is the time, uh, else is already late. Securing the network is part of vertical integrations. So planning of security deployment has to be done in parallel with the horizontal planning. Okay? You can't do the planning deployment, then only you consider the security aspect later. Okay? Because that actually will raise up your, your risk and your network are more exposed and vulnerability, okay? In the other word, as network nodes being deployed, their security must be integrated, okay? And that's, this should be done on the level like individual node level, domain level, end to end service or even business use case. Every network scenario you deploy, you have to consider both solutions and security, okay? I know this approach are well known and already documented from previous generation, 3G, 4G, 
But however, end-to-end -end planning, deployment, and sometimes the testing, not never being as important now is in 5G. Okay? Because in the 5Gs, they got a lot of use case. Uh, one of the use cases will be the IoT devices. IoT devices is expecting to flood the networks in the millions. 10 times, 10 times, even 100 times as compared to current 4G. Okay, this is one of the 5G use case, which is actually being widely used by industrials. Okay, addressing this after network being deployed will dramatically raise the cost and raise. So please don't wait. Now is the time or else it's already late. Okay, cost prevention always much lower compared to the cost for failure facing. Okay, so here I would like to take a poll just to ask all the audience. Do you agree prevention is better than the failure recovery? Simple answer, right? So you can give me the answer, give me the answers, right? Then I will actually be able to share with you. All right, let's pause for like five seconds for here, all right? Okay, all right. I have seen at least like 80% of the audience have participated on this poll. Okay. More than 80%. And they have they have the same answers. Yes, prevention is much is much important and much better as compared to the failure recovery. Right. Thanks, thanks a lot for all the audience on this. Okay. Right. All right. So we have we have the same understandings. Okay. Securing your networks as a title made. Securing the networks is a vertical integration from your project deployments. Let's go something technical. Sir. So earlier we go a lot of papers, paperwork. Now we go something technical. If you see the, the screen here, you can see the 5G SPA with the 5G uh, SPA API HTTP slash 2. I would like to take an example how a tech can get into your core network, your 5G core networks from outside. People think core network is totally isolated. It's a closed network, but they are ways away, right? Let me just pick up one cases, right? So a typical procedure for the case I would like to introduce here is, right? A guy was trying to find the fingerprints, okay? Fingerprint in the range of target public address associated with the 5G core. Because 5G core, you can't really avoid, he will be exposed to the public networks, okay? And second step, he will try to discover as many hosts with the open network services. This is normal, okay? They can use a map to do the open service discovery, okay? From there, they will try to expute the web vulnerability methods among those open services they have been discovered, right? From there, you can take into the 5G core access and then accessing to some of the network functions. Then they can conduct an abuse example. They can spin up of network functions, register with your NRF, take down, deleting one of your production network function and replacing it, okay? So this is actually how we see it. Right, you can see here from the external the uh, malfactors we call it right. This guy actually looked into a public IP and reverse other range that can be part of the infrastructures. Okay, from the data networks, you will try to go in to your five G core networks. Here you can actually use uh, uh some tool like MMAP scanning you were actually able to discover some of the IP poles which are exposed to the public. From this IP pole, you will use and then try to discover what are the open services you may able to penetrate and use it. Some of the web vulnerability that you, could, you should possibly use it. And then you will get into of your, your remote nodes. For example, this is actually the uh, even your test lab notes, which actually might be 
interconnect with your production 5G core. From there, then actually see web vulnerability defined by CVE. This is a lot of method to be used. Half transit traversals, lake password, SQL injections. This is some of the well-known method which you can use to log in to get access to the data he wants. Subscriber information disclosure, a unique key. Let's say example, pre-share key KI disclosure. This is actually one of the things you can do. All right. And you can even get operator setting. What is the current network function you have in your in your 5G uh, control bus? Okay, in your 5G SBA. So from there, you will get a lot of information. You can do a lot of actions, which actually you can do get it from outside, and you can mess up your your network functions. Okay, so this is actually the proven vulnerability, the threat which actually 5G are currently exposed. Okay, HTTP control bus is actually what one of our discover from from 5G. Okay, and once you found any network functions. You can do the abuse for neural functions. You can replacing your SMF. You can spin up another AMF to do the intercept for the traffic from the UE. Okay. This is few methods showing you here, right? The important here, I just want to highlight right here. The NRF, all right, the risk of having NRF interface exposed to the attacker and without the authentication can have a terrible consequences. Indeed, each function is responsible for a task. Each network function is actually responsible for a task. Hijacking these functions allow attacker to be persistent and steal information they want. Okay, monitor whatever the traffic interception they want. Even they can do the whole data interceptions for the for the for the UE and pilot to the sensitive slide quickly gain the uh, access to other infrastructures. If you see here, they can do the, the, the suspensions of one network functions, right? And register the new network functions to the NRF and they can do make in the middle. Okay. Now let's talk about the, the black prestige for the preventions. From, from the demonstration slide, other slide we have seen, traditional signaling, SS7 diameter GDP have been replaced by the IT API, a simple HTTP. A simple HTTP GET or W GET will be the techniques for attacker to attack. Okay, here actually we, we, we highlight security insurance specifications has divided into two sections. Okay, network function sections actually highlighted each of the network functions are critical and need to be secure. Okay, example, AMF. AMF is actually a new module introduced by uh, in, in 5G, okay? Example like NRF. NRF is keeping up all the network functions uh, the repository, which the new network function want to spin up have to be registered with this NRF. UDM. UDM is actually the equivalent to the HSS or HLR. All right, it's actually carry the, the, all the uh, subscriber information. Okay, all right. And this security of uh, the insurance specification also highlighted a technical baseline, mainly focused on IT basics, referred to TS33. Okay, TS33 series, they, they have a lot of security specifications, which is a catalog for general security insurance requirements. They can help you to, to strengthen your data protections in the transit or in the storage. Okay, it strengthens the aspect of the operating systems, open services, okay. Do the user, user logins, the auditors, right? Web services features. This is all things actually being defined by the, by this technical base, baseline. Okay. Right. Let's look at, as I mentioned earlier, right, uh, main goal for you to get the awareness, what is the technical 
specifications being used for 5G security. Let's look at this TS33. 33 series include various of document type, all related to 5G technology and also the use case. It provide you 5G insurance methodology. Okay, in short form, it also provide you that, that just now I have been elaborate. Okay, the, the 5G's uh, insurance certification. Okay, and it, it gives you the guideline for ACMA, the key authentication and key management. Okay, this is all the criticals services, critical specification you have to follow because 5G, the new use case example, auto drive car, remote surgeries. So this is, this require uh, uh, what we call it the insurance, service insurance in order to commit, right? In order to ensure your car was not disconnected from the networks, your remote surgeries was not disconnected, okay? Right. So if you look deeper into the study, Okay, this study is not covered uh, on this PS33, but there will be an enhancement, all right, by, by the third party research. Okay, that actually cover a lot of aspects and we must consider this research by the third party as well. Okay. Let's do a pause here. If you see in these architectures, the interconnect, interconnect of 5G, between home PLNM to the visitor PLNM. They have three, three security aspects to be, to be taken care, okay? Example on the first one on the N32. N32 in 5G security enhancement have been introduced SCPP, Security Edge uh, Protection uh, Proxy. So this is actually the new module introduced in 5G SPA in order to secure the interconnect from the MNO to their rooming partner via IPX for the rooming scenarios. So you can actually see the home SCPP connect with the visitor SCPP, all right? All the mutual authentication, integrity protections, discarding those malfunctions messages, which might cause some mal, mal effect for your network function will be filtered by this SCPP. Okay, then looks at the control bus. Control bus is actually the, the internal communications, right? Internal communication between network function to network functions. Okay, even it's actually the internals, right? The security is actually important. Utilizing all 2.0, the industry standard uh, protocols for authorizations, token being used in the TSL in order to secure the interconnect between network function to network functions, all right? MRS is giving up the all, all network function repository. So this is actually required, all right? TS, TSL is mandatory to be implemented between network function to network function interconnect. Even it is actually the internal access, okay? Right, then let's go for the N9 interface, if you see here, N9 interface, the UPF to UPF is basically, this is actually uh, the protocol being used is already being used on the current 4G LTE, okay? The GDPU is actually being used on this N N9 interface. And GDPU is actually a vulnerable protocol which have been discovered since 2G, 4G. Even like uh, uh, we actually have seen a lot of bad vulnerability have been discovered on the on these protocols, and this N9 interface must be protected. Okay, wire IP UPF, UPS inter inter PLNM user plane security, which implement what we call it PDU packet data rules. This is actually important, right? So this is some of the the security aspect in order to be considered, right? In order to do the, in order to, 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 to allow your 5G call, 5G call modules to interconnect with external. Okay, before we go further, right? So 
let's look at the, let's recap back. What is actually the enhancement done by 5G, okay? We know there's no transparent client data on radio interface. No more TMZ, no more EMZ. But it being replaced by SUPI, SUPI, okay? And then we have seen some recommendation for encryption on the backhaul link. So this basically are extended from the existing 4G, okay? We also seen network slicing according to the business case, okay, can include even like confidential theory, all right? This is actually uh, available on the 5G, okay? Signaling encryption is also one of the, one of the, the one of the practice being recommended, okay? But if you see back the current MNO deployments, Let's, let's ask the audience if you ever seen any of the MNO from their side of the world, sir, do you see signaling encryption implemented in current 2G to 4G LTE, right? So Max, I appreciate you can help to pull out the pool for this. Right. So let's do a, a let's do a, just a five just five seconds just allow you to answer all right so hopefully we can actually we can actually see more answers on here all right so I have seen a lot of uh, audience that put out the efforts all right Okay, we have we have more than we have more than sixty percent of the onion I participate on this. Fifty percent of the onion have actually highlighted have they have not seen signaling encryption being deployed. Okay, so this is actually in the real life. Okay, so let's go further. All right, thanks for your participation on here. Okay, because we know some of the some of the recommendation was put, but whether to deploy is actually another story. Because we have seen in 4G LTE on the diameter S6A, on the on the uh, on the S8 or GP interface for GDP, uh, always the recommendation to put the encryptions. Okay, but there will be a very little deployments in the real life. Okay. Let's look at the 5G known caveat. Okay, in real life, no one has encrypted, I would say like not 100% of the MNO have encrypted their signaling for many reasons. For quality insurance, because you do the encryption, some of the handset might not be able to support. Right? You want to ensure a good user experience. So this is actually how the, the encryption doesn't take place to ease the maintenance and to ease the monitoring, okay? So this is actually happened in real life. It actually we seen the encryptions wasn't being deployed 100% by the MFO. Second, the well-known caveat in the 5G. TSCP was actually used on, on the interface between the UPF to the SMF. So this is actually a good thing to separate the control and user plane, especially when we think of ultra low latency application, auto connect car, remote surgery. But PFCP itself is not a safe protocol. We have discovered the vulnerability which we can expose. We can make use of this PFCP environment to allow any of our unauthorized access. Okay. The third thing here, Authentication network function, it was quite important. NRF and SCP, SCP for billings, should verify all requests, such as registr registering the new network function instance. When you do a deleting of network function instance, when you get an authorized request, which can cause severe interruption, hijacking traffic, man in the middle. This all happens, all right, because in the aspect of authorizing authorizing network functions. It wasn't 100% put in place, 
Okay. I have seen one operator who have NRF not verifying even the request for a new network function registrations. So we can easily register a fake network functions into the NRF. In addition, other network functions are not looking at NRF. They're just looking at their own local configurations because in network function have their own functionality. So this is totally against 3 gpp specifications. Okay. Since everything in Telco is on the trust, trust based. So if you don't encrypt, you don't isolate, you don't control the authentications. The road NEF may impact the entire availability for your networks. Okay. Finally, the last topic we want to want to share with you: IG is all API, HTTP slash two API, TCP, right? Even the GDPU is still still using, right? To protect your network for malicious API request, attacker can send the API with the wrong syntax, like missing bracket, on the purpose in order to crash the API puzzle at the endpoint. Okay, so API gateway might be a consideration point to inspect all incoming API, right? In order to do to filter up all the malforms, the API request. That might come to the questions whether we should firewall on the 5G. All right. So this is actually the, the one of the common questions by the operators. The answer is yes or no, All right? Yes, yeah, firewall can help you to filter the malform and attack, All right? But if the attacker come from inside, this is actually something which firewall cannot do the prevention. Okay, so this is why we highlighted security guideline being highlighted in TS.33 series. All right, you most of the MNO have to take the effort to to follow. Okay, to implement. If you not, basically you can do on your own way. You can form up the MBSS minimum baseline security standard for each number functions. Ask your vendor to do the hardening based on this MBSS. Okay, that that actually are able to 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 do uh, the first step preventions, all right? And you can do the assessment. You can use the assessment to validate whether vendor are doing those hardening. Okay, so this is this is actually what we we need to consider because in five Gs, finding borders, finding borders is actually a new game for most of the operators. All right. That's, we have covered for 5G so far. Let's think of some of the module in 4G, IMS, All right? We still have IMS in 5G. This module cannot be excluded, okay? We know most of the MNO have planned to turn off 2G, 2G to 3G globally, All right? Which actually the key driver for 4G uh, voice over LTE, even voice over 5G for the inter international grooming. And we have tested the IMS call and we have actually discovered, and actually list up here, we have actually discovered many of the threat and vulnerability which are exposed by the IMS. Registration hijackings, caller ID spoofings, media hijacking, men in the middle scenarios, okay? Even like the SQL injections, is also exposed by the IMS. Okay, one of the the, the highlight we like to hear will be on the flash call, or what we call it a shadow telco. Flash call or shadow telco is a form of authentication used by some of the apps which actually installed on the UE itself, right? And is published by GSNA. Flash call. Is part of the authentication solution which forecasts to grow right from 60 million in 2021 last year to 130 billion in 2026. Okay, so this is actually the some of the conversion point, right? So for those is still very standard mobile operator scenario. All right, let's look at some private networks, okay, private network use case. Because 5G are allowed to do those 
uh, no slicing, they can actually easily spin up the 5G private networks. All right, 5G use case. Here, actually, I, I just highlighted only three, all right? Practically smart factory, industry 4.0, smart ports for logistics is widely used even in the current 4G LTE. And 5G, because of support, capability to support massive IoT. So this is actually taking the place. Private 5G, we are able to provide survey insurance. Example, ultra reliable, low latency communications. A smart factory implement a lot of sensors for data collection, analytics, which lead to production efficiency, improve to compound with the industry for the O, right? You can increase your production, you can increase your even like quality, right? With the implementing of the 5G with the sensors. Smart ports, the massive IoT devices, RFID to ease the distribution of cargo. They can spin up the logistics. You can you make order via any e-commerce, you can get it on the next day. This could happen. Okay. So all these can achieve with a dedicated 5G private network. Service availability will be high concern. And this is actually the aspect to look after. Race is not acceptable. Okay. Any trade attack will cause million dollar loss. Just imagine a stop production for a smart factory for a day, million dollar loss. To secure the services, bare memory, the closed network monitoring is recommended. Let's look at what actually we can do here. Let's talk about 5G. One is a standalone, which means the private network is have all equal network function inside, they have their own dedicated RAN, 5G core, which actually required, right? Doesn't require to interconnect with the mobile core. At the glance, it looks isolated. Well, possibility. No one can guarantee the attacker can play a smart attack against 5G core through RAN or even through other parameters. So this point should be inspected. Okay. So this is actually what we highlighted the post monitoring on the control bus or HTTP. This is actually required. Okay. And another point, if you've seen the fundamentals virtualizations for the 5G private networks. If any application or attacker are able to assume the control of the virtualization management, game over, game over for your 5G, they can mess up your 5G, they can bring down your smart factory. Okay. Let's look at something which is shared with public infrastructures. Okay, we have another use case uh, for the 5G wholesales. All right, so this is actually the, the second use case. Private networks share public infrastructures. In short form, we call PNN, MPN. Okay, right. So here they actually are sharing the public infrastructures. It's a bit complicated. Let's say an enterprise company having a private 5G, we sharing the 5G call with a mobile operator. This is actually the scenario I described here, right? Okay, they have the industrial confidential data. Example like those laboratory Pfizer's COVID-19 uh, vaccine Pfizer's semiconductors company, they have the private 5G to monitor their product line with the ultra high resolution cameras, which connect to the application in their core networks. Right? There is a machine learning application which analyzing the video data and detect any scenario of any situation of failure. They can do the improvements. Okay, for for this uh, for the production use, so data distribution between internal one to external one from their perspective are super important. In the other words, PNI and P NPN flight must be controlled. You need to have the visibility control, control of five G core detection protections. Okay, and you need to have a continuous inspection. Inspection for your PNI and PN slides in order to ensure there's no unauthorized access, right? Form which can breach into these private networks. Okay. From there, let's move up to our last case study for 5G wholesale operator. Okay. Let's analyze a bit. All right. So, 5G wholesale 
which provide part of the core, therefore have a direct connection to the SPA, to its customer. In the diagram, you might notice that beyond the local attack, their network is open for attack from both customer and international domain player. Okay, let's take the first subscriber from the access network. All right, you can actually attack able to craft the message to the AMF. Okay, you can also using the roaming channels to craft the message to the AMF. All right, with the accessing to this AMF, you can do a lot, of, a lot of control, a lot of uh, abuse. Okay, let's look at medication plan. Okay, so basically, this is actually the use case where the standard border firewall usually used to block protocol other than HTTP slash two, other than IP address, which being recognized by the partner operators. But the race is still clear because they are sending the same HTTP slash two messages, right? Which might not be able to resolve by border firewall. So three step here, all right? First two step is actually important, right? And third step is actually for the considerations, okay? First step, you need to have active inspections, okay? Active inspection to give you the full awareness for your AMF signaling security posture. You can send the attack messages towards your AMF, see how you react, okay? From there, you can see what actually the, the security posture being exposed via the security monitoring, okay? They were able to detect in real time any attack which actually entered to the end, okay? This grant the visibility on the insider attack as well as the external attack from the national partners for the wholesale case, even from the international roaming, okay? The third step, right? The third step is to put a firewall in front of the AMF in order to do the discarding of the, the, the messages. You have the border firewall discarding the hash, discarding all uh, requests rather than HTTP slash two, but you also can have the firewall in front of AMF to grant the protections from insider and the external, right? So this is actually uh, some of the medications which actually we can elaborate here, right? Okay, if you have come across any questions, right? So feel free to put it on the check box. All right, we have another five minutes time where in the, by the end of this webinar, I will actually go through the, all the questions you put and uh, why you some answer, all right? Okay. So this is the scenario where operator have a single 5G core network function and decided to implement the, those uh, the detection and protection. Okay, daily, daily maintenance and evolving of complete 5G networks may rely on the lab environment. Okay, if this is also one of the uh, medication point, which for your considerations, 5G lab itself, by the name itself, it provides the test environment for the MNO for the various use cases to validate the network functions, whether you can actually do the even like the uh, how you register the network function into your NRF, okay? You can see what actually the, the attack which can be, can be initiated from the vulnerable protocols, the FCP, HTTP slash two, all right? You can do the attack, simulation of attack from the access network, from, from the access network. You can, you can do a practicals in the lab environment, right? See the SPA architectures, which point of my vendors, which point of the network function is actually vulnerable, okay? Overall, we actually suggested to the best practice for MNO is actually to initiate the cyber drills to do the attack rehearsal, right? And part of it, you also can do the actually the training. The training in order for your team, network team, network peoples, IT peoples, even like the security people, in order to ramp up these 5G architectures, okay? All right, 
the last part, just to share the security practice and approach. Okay, so this is actually what we we put it up IDP. I for inspection, D for detection, T for protection. Okay, inspections with the frequent inspection or assessment, you know your security security protection level, whether you are on the high protection, medium protection, or low protection. Okay, you have full visibility and understanding for the potential risk which your end work is exposing. And super important for many operators. They think their network are pretty much secure, okay, committed by their vendors. But eventually, if you do the inspections, they will give that a very big turn, turnaround point. Okay, even you, you try to ask your vendor to, to, to answer, they can't actually give you the solid answer. Why this, after I did auditing, some of the security posture, security guidelines defined by TS.33 series, it wasn't in place, okay? So this is the, the important in order to use some of the tool like bridge and attack simulation. You can easily assess your current security posture in your in, in your current setup. That gives you full visibility. Okay. Detection is needed because you don't know when the attack will enter to your network. Detection provides you 24 by 7 real-time monitoring against the parameters against the parameter of attack, give you the real-time detection and recommendation as well for you to do the immediate action and medication. Okay, this is why we always highlight detection is important to give you the eye visibility. What is the content in your asset? What is the content in your asset in order for you to react for that particular content? Okay, then you can use the protection module. All right, to secure your network, to do all filterings, right, to enhance your, your filtering from the web, from the existing GDP, from the KCP. Okay. So this is actually the practice practice actually we have seen, all right, and we would like to, to, to share with you on here. So this is actually the thing with, I would like to share along with my webinar for today, all right. So I don't see any question was tested by the participation here, only in here. Anyway, if you have any additional questions, right, feel free to reach out to us, right? Because, yep, we have one, right? Uh, Maxine, if you allow, and actually uh, allow the, the, audi the audience to speak. Yeah, it's open. The microphone is open, guys. You can ask yep. your question. Yep. Hi. Go ahead. Uh, hello, William. Thank you very much for your presentation. This is Mabu. Mm -hmm. uh, so, looking at the presentations and uh, uh, having said the fact that the GTP uh, was not sec secured by design mm -hmm. since long back, and we will also have to be dependent on GTP uh, for 5G as well, both NSA and SA. <clears throat> Uh, but also at the same time, it's very difficult uh, using the traditional encryption technology to secure the uh, end and interface. Mm -hmm. So what is uh, the recommended guidelines from your side uh, to protect the, uh, you know, GTP at least from the inside of the network? Yeah, thanks. Thanks, Mabo, for these questions. All right. So the, the simple answer for your question here, Mabu, yeah. The each of the network functions, they have their own security posture, all right? They have their own, uh, we call it like minimum baseline, right? So example, the the one you highlighted here right, on the GDPs, that is actually uh, uh, the, the module involved on the UPF and also the uh, SMF. The first step before implementing any firewalls, any firewalls on, on this interface and my interface, we will recommend at least request your vendors to implement all the security, security guidelines, security standards to be 
to be implemented on these two network functions, UPF and SMF. From there, you can actually do the even the first step preventions, just like uh, 2G. If you're able to do the preventions for information disclosure, you can do the prevention for the following step of the attack. Okay, so this is actually our first recommendations, right? For this, before you implemented the IP UPS, just play using the PDU. That PDU is actually another another further step. So first step, ensure vendors are implementing all the security guidelines given by 3GPP. So this is actually the important. Okay, Apo. Okay, okay. Thanks. So uh, the other questions is one of the one of the topic is heavily discussed in different industry forum like N two N six interface because mm -hmm. since the MME and MF will be interconnected using N twenty six interface, and this is neither a HTTP two or um, rather a this is a old uh, legacy uh you know point-to-point -point interfaces so do you have any specific recommendations or guidelines to secure the n26 interface because at anyhow the n26 will be used at least in my opinion for next uh, five to six years at least in this part of the world yep yep my book well, i uh... From, from your questions, I know you actually are, are looking something to gain from this webinar. I appreciate that. Okay. I don't have a direct answer for your, for your, for, for your inquiry on this N16, right? So for, I can, I can take it offline with you. All right, Mabu. Okay. I'll okay. follow up. I'll follow up with you. N, on, on, on N26, this. N26, not yeah. N16. Sorry. No. N26. All right. Okay. Okay. Yeah. All right. So, okay. yeah. Any other questions? So you the recorded webinar on demand? Yeah, we will send the recording to to the people who uh, registered for the event who missed it. It will follow the next day. All right. Okay. Thanks, everyone. I think my webinar have consumed additional two minutes now. But appreciate your time. All right, and effort to to be with me. All right, along with this uh, these sessions. I hope. Back to our initial uh, takeaway home. So we gave you some awareness, some alerts, some risks which might be exposed on the front sheet. Okay. Thanks everyone for, for participation on today. Appreciate it. Thank, thank you, William, and thanks, team. Thank you, everyone.